In the first movie, Megatron travels to Earth in search of the Allspark. However, in this film, it is mentioned that Earth is the rendezvous point for him and Sentinel Prime. This is confounded by the fact that no Transformers in the first film seem to have knowledge of Earth up to this point. It is possible that Megatron had intended to meet Sentinel after retrieving the Allspark and then have Cybertron bridged to Earth in order to restore it. The comic adaption says that Sentinel was supposed to find the last Star Harvester to fuel their empire's expansion before the rendezvous with Megatron. Dark of the Moon Issue 3 Sentinel Prime stated that all he ever wanted was the survival of the Cybertronian race after Megatron rescued Optimus from being killed by Sentinel. However, he killed Ironhide which would mean he was only further killing his own race and planned on killing Optimus, which is absolutely hypocritical, unless he only said that to talk Optimus out of killing him in the end of the film and that he really only wanted Cybertron to survive, not their race. Probably trying to make a point? Next to Optimus, Ironhide is one of the more deadly and dangerous Autobots. Even if they retrieve the Allspark, they can simply restore it on Cybertron and revive the planet instead of enslaving humans to rebuild the planet. Probably since the planet happened to have intelligent life there, it is possible that the Decepticons took the opportunity to enslave them. Seymour Simmons was thrown by a dread and got a broken leg in the highway chase. When he comes with Sam to watch the Autobots exiled, he is on a wheelchair with his leg bandaged. However, after Sentinel Prime killed Ironhide, Seymour is seen with Lennox ordering him to evacuate all the remaining soldiers not killed off by Sentinel back to the nest base. This cannot be possible because Seymour should not have been at the site where Ironhide died and Dutch should have taken him to the hospital. Seymour would then be wheelchair bound for the rest of the film. So this makes the question why was he injured, then uninjured, then wheelchair bound. Wrong. Simmons is actually nowhere to be seen from the point that he is thrown from his Maybach until the point that he talks to Sam regarding the sending off of the Autobots, which he is wheelchair bound in. Perhaps this was a deleted scene, shot that was deleted due to the impossibility of such. In 1963, the Decepticons on Moon started to move Energon pillars out of the Ark. However, Megatron, who arrived at Earth 10,000 years ago, woke up in 2000s. So who gave the order to take Energon pillars out of the Ark? Especially confusing as in Dark of the Moon, this seems to be a long-standing plan to which other Decepticon leadership such as Starscream have been kept in the dark as to the disposition of a large portion of their own troops. Megatron and Sentinel Prime's deal should be secret between them. A possible reason is that Megatron has told all or part of the deal to his lieutenant, who later ordered Decepticons go to the moon. Or simply the Decepticons found the Ark and decided to steal the pillars. Soundwave seemed to be aware of the plan and Dylan Gould said he and Laserbeak were responsible for the space programs being shut down. He could have easily given the order. In the comic adaption, Megatron states that, while I lay prisoner in that wretched dam, Soundwave was watching over this planet. Dark of the Moon Issue 1 Megatron had claimed that he became relieved Cybertron was finally going to be saved. The reason why Cybertron was a dead planet in the first place was because of the Civil War. In the first film, Megatron is blamed for starting the entire war. Sentinel Prime explained his true plan and having made a deal with Megatron just behind Ironhide, yet Ironhide doesn't react to this. Ironhide should have turned around and act surprised to what Sentinel just said, then angrily demand an answer for this. He was just standing there acting as if he didn't hear what Sentinel said. Therefore, he did not realize Sentinel was about to shoot him with his cosmic rust gun. The time lapse between Sentinel's admittance and Ironhide's murder is a whopping two seconds. He clearly didn't have time to react, and didn't expect to be betrayed like that. Come on, think. Dylan answered a call to say that he could already see Megatron coming. It was because of him answering the call that Dutch hacked his phone and pinpointed his location. Why he did that, and who called him anyways? Dutch set it a trap by calling Dylan using Sam's phone, and Dylan decided to answer the call thinking that Sam wanted an update about what was going on. In the novelization, Dutch told Sam he was going to call the last number that called him, 
and the last call he received was from Dylan. Simmons even added, Dylan knows that we know where he is. One of two things happens. He kills her outright and dumps the body, or he takes off again. Maybe even ditches the cell phone cause he's figured out that that's how he found him. The driller was able to capture Optimus Prime's trailer why didn't it destroy the trailer? The driller serves only as Shockwave's hunting pet, protector and main way of transportation. The driller might not be smart enough to recognize the trailer as any important material for the Autobots, and Shockwave was too busy trying to hunt down the Autobots. In the novelization, Shockwave leaves it as part of a trap, setting Decepticon guards to kill Optimus, but they fail. So, apparently Megatron is able to be incapacitated by the cold temperatures of the Arctic, which can get as cold as minus 50 degrees Celsius in the first movie. But Optimus, Ratchet, and a whole horde of Decepticons can survive on the moon unaided. The temperature of the moon can get as cold as minus 153 degrees Celsius. In the first film, Banachek said that his navigational systems were screwed up when he hit the atmosphere sending him off course and, unexpectedly, crashing into the ice. In Dark of the Moon, they are intending to go to a cold environment so they probably had some kind of heating system in them or they could stand it for a certain time period. But the Decepticons there were under the surface, as seen when Sentinel activated the space bridge to the moon, which could have kept them, warm, enough to still live consciously or they could have been in stasis until the activation. Also, it is possible that the presence of the ice imprisoning Megatron, not just the cold temperatures, is what incapacitated him. So, a bunch of the Decepticons just stay on the moon instead of coming to Earth to support their leader in the last two battles when such force would be equally decisive? This is especially confusing since the Decepticons have traveled across whole star systems to arrive at Earth then wait right next door for a space bridge. Those Decepticons were probably waiting for the space bridge. In the previous films, Sentinel Prime was still as stasis. In the first film, Megatron would easily restore Cybertron if he succeeded to bring the Allspark back to Cybertron. In the second film, the Fallen wanted to use the Solar Harvester to destroy Earth. However, both failed, and he was killed, leaving Megatron to proceed with his original plan to meet up with Sentinel Prime. Megatron couldn't revive Sentinel either, making it obvious why he didn't go with Sentinel in the first place. It's likely the additional Decepticon fleet were among the cons tracking down Megatron when he disappeared after the Allspark. It's also likely Starscream, the de facto leader due to Megatron's absence, ordered the cons on the moon to go into stasis and conserve their energon. After all, sending all the cons would be a senseless waste. Starscream finds Megatron's brutal, violent methods to be absurd, and prefers gaining advantage through deception, fitting this theory. He would then have had Soundwave stay in Earth's stratosphere, so he could relay necessary orders to the army on the moon, and also act as the Decepticon's overall eyes and ears, being able to send his scouts and monitor transmissions. Soundwave wouldn't have informed Megatron of the additional forces on the moon because he wasn't ordered to and Starscream would keep silent about it because of his own priorities. Bumblebee saves Sam and Lennox, but is somehow captured with the others by Soundwave seconds later. However, there was a minute gap before we saw him again. It's possible that he was captured off-screen, possibly trying to free the others. When Optimus is killing Decepticons, he uses the guns of his jetpack, then his swords. When he charges at Shockwave, his weapons are gone. He could have stored them through subspace before killing him. Crowbar knock over a highway sign for other Dread members. But if you look closer, the sign is upside down. Technically, it's impossible to jump. However, right before they jump, the sign shows that it was laid down and rotated. But after both complete the transform and start chasing, the sign was upside down again. When Dutch was shown in the screen, the sign was laid down and rotated again.